Leadership is, um, as we know, about learning. And I feel, as I know you all do, very much um, the extraordinary opportunity we have today that we've just experienced learning from Professor Dror and Les Wexner and, and the other um, panelists that we're going to be learning from. It's humbling to be uh, here with you. I just want to talk for a few minutes about challenges that I see for Jewish leadership from a diaspora perspective. I want to talk first about the purpose of leadership. Leaders leverage the actions of the individual to affect the collective. Leaders require people. For the Jewish people, we have a story that's remained remarkably constant for years, thousands of years. It's about a people who have a covenant and a mission to work in partnership with God to build a more fair, just, and moral world. The core challenge of Jewish leadership has always been fending off threats to our survival and achieving our national mission. In today's world, we face two threats that challenge our ability to lead the Jewish people in the future. One is an existential threat that is being talked about in other form. We're all familiar with it. I don't want to belabor it. The other is the um, effect of assimilation. It's the reality of assimilation. <clears throat> the flip side of the extraordinary freedom and success that Jews have achieved in the United States and elsewhere in the West is a growing diminution of a sense of Jewish identity, which stems from a lack of knowledge about our heritage and a disconnect, and some would say increasing disconnect, to the state of Israel. On this, the 60th anniversary of the state of Israel, the task we are liberated from is um, no, we no longer have to worry about the task of building the state, but we do have to be focused on the task of ensuring the state's survival and the connection of diaspora Jews who live today and those who have yet to join our people to the historic enterprise that we all share in, the Jewish enterprise. What this means, I believe, is that we really can't see ourselves as separate entities. We're part of a collective. The job that we have in the diaspora is essentially the same as the job in Israel. Although there are, of course, important differences depending on the kind of job, volunteer, or professional that you hold, we're essentially in the same business. So I want to talk for a second about whether there's a particular profile that one should seek when you're trying to identify leaders. My own view is that trying to identify an elaborate set of ideal attributes for future leaders in a community that's as diverse as ours may not be the most um, successful way to proceed. Because the reality is that leadership and leadership styles vary with nations, with systems, with organizations, and with organizational culture. Moses, we know, was a different leader than Ben-Gurion. Devorah, much different than Golda Meir. Volunteer leaders have different responsibilities and sometimes even different perspectives than their paid counterparts. And NGO leaders have different responsibilities and certainly different goals sometimes than governmental leaders. But though there are differences, there, are, there is, I believe, a crucial similarity. And that has to do with what leaders focus on. They focus on identifying the needs of their time and then develop a vision for how to secure that future. I believe that the critical need of Jewish leaders, that Jewish leaders must address is how to go beyond the personal, political, and organizational interests that we all have at this time of mounting local pressures, growing distance between diaspora and Israeli Jews, and a general turn away from communal needs towards individual interests, and develop a shared sense of responsibility for the collective, the collective security and welfare of the Jewish people. How? How do we do that? My own view is heavily influenced and reflect by my own personal path and it reflects the experiences that I've had, particularly as a direct result of my experience as a Wexner Heritage Fellow, for which I am um, deeply indebted to Les and Abigail 
um, Wexner and the Wexner Foundation staff for providing this opportunity. It's very meaningful for me to be able to say this from a public forum. What I learned from Wexner, from the Wexner program and from Wexner, is about our story, about our people. I learned about the history, the culture, the philosophy, religion, politics, and literature of our people. And I came to understand that that learning, that education, is the foundational piece of Jewish leadership. And it's what we need to secure our leadership now and in the future. Beyond education, some might ask whether there are personal attributes that we should be seeking. My own view is that there are three that are important. One is humility. One is the ability to be open to new ideas. And the third is the ability to demonstrate learning, particularly learning from failure. Because as we know, it's not always a straightforward process. All right. <laughs> So where will future leaders come from and how do you develop and cultivate them? Not surprisingly, given the diverse and pluralistic nature of the Jewish world today, there are a plethora of programs and organized efforts to cultivate, train, and mentor future leaders. They range from major national and binational efforts. There are academic and educational efforts focusing on skill acquisition. There are separate leadership and training institutes for each of the various um, religious streams. And every single Jewish organization that I'm aware of, including Hadassah, has its own leadership and training uh, activity. And let me acknowledge the emerging leaders who are here from uh, our year course and other programs that we run in, in Israel. Given the rapid pace of change and diversity of the community, it's probably as it should be to have this plethora of programs. Therefore, I believe that the priority need is not so much um, one of creating an address, one address for Jewish communal leadership, but rather creating mechanisms for sharing best practices across the community. Let me end with a different point. I'm actually much less concerned about finding Jewish leaders than I am about keeping them. Leadership is hard work, and much of the time it's not very glamorous. Who really does get excited about budgets? Meetings, phone calls, plane rides, meetings, late night speaking engagements, making decisions with incomplete information, sometimes um, under very extreme time pressures which lead to more meetings. There has to be a reason to sign up for this work, and I believe that we have one. It's one that's connected directly to our story and the mission of the Jewish people. Too often, our leaders are turned off by our systems, by our structures, and the territoriality that we have in the Jewish communal world. And this happens at the expense of our story. It's essential, I believe, for us to redouble our efforts to work together in partnership, not only in terms of funding, but, and importantly, in terms of the programmatic work that we do. At Hadassah, for example, our Leadership Academy now for the first time is running um, a session, a, a um, class in Western Massachusetts directly in partnership with the Federation there. And there are many other examples of this. Wexner um, Foundation Heritage, Heritage and other programs are examples of this. And there are other federation programs as well. In preparation for this talk, I googled the word leadership. And I have got, if memory serves me correctly, more than 100 million hits. It's a staggering number. And then I went on to Amazon did the same thing, and got over 300,000. The market's telling us something. There's no shortage of interest in leadership. We need to make sure there's a reason and a purpose for becoming a leader. 